Hello everyone, here we are at our second group problem. So what's going on? Well, we can see right here is we have a solid, why are you doing that to me? A solid steel rod and we're applying a torque to it. Now we don't know what that torque is. We're going to try to figure out what that is going to be. Now that solid steel rod goes all the way down here. Then it's attached to this end plate, it's fixed to it. And that end plate is then fixed to this hollow tube, which is finally going to be attached by these bolts. So this twists, goes all the way down here, then this begins to twist this tube. Okay. Now, the brass tube has allowable shear stress of 6 KSI. That's right there. And the steel rod has allowable shear stress of 18 KSI. You know what the outside diameter of the tube is? It's going to be 1.5 inches. And its wall thickness is 0.125 inch. Now we really want to know what that largest torque T that we can apply is without causing it to break. And therefore the minimum diameter required for steel rod one. So what's the maximum torque we can apply without breaking the tube and the minimum diameter for that? Well, as always, I'm going to let you run off on your own and see if you can do it. If you can't, that's completely fine. Do not worry about it. Um, but I want you to try. Try your best on this. Now, if you feel like you're about to rock this, all the more power to you. I'm happy to hear that. But if you're not, that's going to be okay. So grab your traveling gnome, grab a rubber duck, whatever you need to, and go rock this. So three, two, one, and you're back. You came back, you rocked it, maybe you didn't rock it, but you had no idea what to do. Either way, we're going to do it together right now. So let's try this out. First thing we need to do is draw a free body diagram. It's going to make things a lot easier. Now we're going to have a torque in the steel rod. We're also going to have a torque in that end plate. And for that, we're going to need to start solving our equations of equilibrium. So what we can realize is that the torque in the steel rod is going to be the same as the torque in that end plate. It's going to be in opposite directions. And then using the known properties of the end plate, we can then start calculating its um, form of inertia. So when I say end plate, I mean this little brass tube right here, but they're all connected. So we get that the polar moment inertia is going to be 0.257325. I keep it to a ridiculous number of decimal places while we're doing the problem, and then you cut it down at the end. Um, and this is the outer diameter, and this will be the inner diameter of my plate. And then I can finally calculate the torque, because what do we know about this? Well, we know that shear stress is equal to torque times polar moment inertia over the radius, which I think I just butchered. I did. Sorry, I always get this mixed up. There we go. And so this time we said, okay, instead of solving for the shear stress, we're going to solve for the torque because we know what the maximum shear stress is. We plug it in, 6,000 PSI, and everything else in here. And we'll get that this is 2.06 kip inch. 2.06 kip inch is the most torque we can apply without breaking that tube. Now, one question for all of you might be, why is the torque here the same as the torque here? Because, you know, that's a much smaller radius and this is a much larger radius. And isn't like, you know, torque equal to force times distance, the distance increased. increased. Yes, the distance increased, but since that distance increased, the amount of force that's actually applying decreased because the torque is the thing that's held constant between these two. Um, which is the force that can actually be applied at that distance is much, much smaller. Or the force that I'm having to apply for you to feel that torque is much, much larger the further in I am. Um, and you realize this. For example, if you have a rod, you hold it off to the side, and somebody presses on the end of it, and you are gripping it right here, well, it is really hard for you to resist that twisting motion. You're going to have to apply a lot of force to keep it from twisting. So the forces are different. However, if this is held in equilibrium, 
the torques are the same, just opposite. And that's what's going on right here. Now we want to find the maximum diameter D, which isn't too hard because we know that the shear stress and the torque are going to be all functions of the diameter. We know what the torque is now. So instead of what we've been doing in the past where we were trying to figure out um, the shear stress or the torque given the diameter, we're going to solve for the diameter. So looking back at our equation, we know that shear stress is equal to our torque times the radius over um, our polar moment of inertia. And we're going to solve for the polar moment of inertia. So flip that around and what I'll get is that J is equal to TC over tau. Then I'm going to plug in my equation for J. And that is going to be pi over 32 D to the fourth equals TC over tau. And I have to remember that C is simply half of my diameter. So what I really have here is pi over 32 d to the fourth is equal to t d over 2 tau. And when I finally solve, I'll get this equation right here. Be careful, I'll find out that the max diameter, I, or sorry, the minimum diameter I need will have to be 0.835 inches. As long as it's greater than that, it won't fail as long as there's no imperfections and lots of other little assumptions and caveats there. So that is it for this section, I believe. Yes. So I hope this helped you. I hope you got a little bit better grasp on torque, how we transmit it, and how we can calculate the torque or the shear stress or the shear strain given a few different parameters. So thank you for listening, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.